I don't think it's controversial to say that I am sick of Diaspora. Or rather, I'm sick of how the show treats her. Ever since season 5, we've continually expunged her criminal record for the sake of dragging her back into the plot and generating needless drama between Bloom and Skye. It might seem like the obvious choice from a superficial glance, but if you go back to the first three seasons, you'll find that Diaspora actually isn't all that villainous. Rather, she's an interesting character who's objectively a victim in the first two seasons and then has her desperation preyed upon by Valtor in Season 3. There is so much more to Diaspora than meets the eye and so much potential nuance to work with. Her story could have deconstructed so many narrative tropes that pit women against each other over a boring man or the crazy ex-girlfriend, but instead, it became nothing more than nonsensical chaos that plays into those tired tropes. Rosie Vision has a great video about the darkest moments in Winx Club, during which she mentions all this nonsense with Diaspora, and I highly suggest you check it out. But today, we're going to specifically talk about Diaspora's story and why she deserved better. Diaspora is a princess from the planet Arachleon. This is a bit confusing given the other worlds of the magical universe only have one monarchy each, while Arachleon appears to have at least two. It doesn't really matter. In any case, she was born to high status parents, apparently brought up with her main goal being to marry a prince. This is not too shocking given it's a similar experience we've seen of other princesses in the show like Stella and especially Aisha on the note of the arranged marriage. Right from birth, I was trained to be one thing. Uh -huh. A mistress of etiquette. Yeah, that's it. It was such a bore. A princess should be seen and not heard, don't I know it? Back when they had arranged marriages, that's when they'd announce who you were going to marry. It's still the case in some kingdoms. Yeah, can you imagine? The main difference here, though, is that Diospero actually seems to love Skye, or at the very least, she's become infatuated with him and considers themselves to be friends. We don't know much about their history or dynamic outside of their attraction being one-sided on Diospero's part which is odd given it's usually the other way around when it comes to arranged marriages historically. Women largely were seen as the property of the men who married them, an arrangement considered more a business transaction than an affirmation of true love. But the point is the show is uninterested in Diaspora and Skye's past beyond... Oh, drama. Sky's identity as Prince of Arachleon has been hidden, given he was the target of Yoshinoya, a major crime boss who'd routinely tried to abduct him since his childhood. Brandon, who is this Yoshinoya? A nasty guy who's been after Sky since we were kids. He's the reason you and Sky traded places? Bingo. Yoshinoya wants the throne, so every chance he gets, he sends his ninjas after us. He switched identities with his squire, Brandon, which likely means that Sky and Diaspora's engagement was also hidden. That not only kept Bloom from learning about this engagement and kept Stella from asking asking questions of why her fake prince had a fiancé, but it also likely added a romantic seclusion to the relationship in Diaspora's mind, not to mention concern for her man being, you know, the target of a violent criminal. On the day of the royals, yes, we're calling it that, Bloom sneaks into Red Fountain to try and talk to Skye, who had been ghosting her since their mission to Cloud Tower, because, you know, Bloom was tricked into thinking she was a witch by the tricks, and then Skye was like, ew, that's gross. I, mm. And then he doesn't talk to her for weeks, because he sucks. Skye debates whether to come clean to Bloom about his true identity as a prince and his engagement to Diaspro. Diaspro? The girl I've got to marry. I don't want to. I love Bloom. But before he can, Bloom encounters Diaspro speaking to Skye over the phone. Given the Trix's previous schemes in manipulating and deceiving her, Bloom assumes that the three witches must somehow be behind this. Her boyfriend? No, it can't be. It's got to be a trick. I'm sure it is. Those horrible witches. It is understandable given Bloom at this point has had her ability to trust thoroughly eroded, and there is a precedent to believe that the Trix would do something like this but it still does not change the fact that she lures Diaspro in Innocent away and instead of investigating the situation to determine if this is indeed a trick, she knocks her guard unconscious and attacks her unprompted. Ah! Ah! Diaspro only transforms and fights back out of self-defense while Bloom continues assaulting her. Diaspora's first spell is even a method to restrain Bloom to keep her from fighting, to keep them both from hurting each other. 
and then she uses a shield to protect herself from Bloom. She only fights back when Bloom shows that she is willing to hurt her. When the fight is dragged outside, Diaspora runs to Sky for protection, which then leads to the public revelation of Sky and Brenton's identity swap and the engagement between Sky and Diaspora. Everyone is thrown for a loop, but the story is so focused on the aftermath for Bloom and the Winx that we never focus on the perspective of the victim of all of this. Diospro. Diospro didn't do anything wrong. She was just out enjoying the festivities before she was led away and assaulted, then had her engagement to the man she loved dissolved so he could be with the woman who trapped and attacked her. And then, when Red Fountain finds itself under siege by the Army of Decay, Diospro tries to save Skye, saying that his kingdom needs him. There's definitely an air of classism here, saying that the fighting on the ground should be left to the commoners rather than a noble like Skye. We're fighting to save the dimension! My place is here! Don't be silly! You're a prince! Let these peasants fight for you! Your duty is to rule! But there is also a genuine concern for Skye's safety, which is probably nothing new to Diospro. So when Skye refuses, it is kind of understandable why Diospro is not pleased with his decision. We we then see Diospro again in Season 2, where she has been kidnapped by the Pachamen, techno ninja activists who have been deceived by Yoshinoya into allowing him to ransom the Arachleon monarchy. Sky's parents hope this mission to rescue Diospro will make the two rekindle their engagement. Certainly that Bloom girl is a poor match for him. Rescuing Diospro is quite the risky business, however it may help change his mind about marrying her. Something good might come out of this yet. But it's clear Sky's focus is on Diospro's safety as an old friend and a genuine innocent in danger. Bloom's a bit uncomfortable, but she does put herself in danger in order to get Diospro out of harm's way. There's no apology or direct conversation between the two, but we do get some background on why Diospro is still bitter about the failed engagement that we will talk about later. But I will say that Flora and Diospro, in my diseased head canon, are absolutely BFFs. It's so not fair. Bloom's the one who rescued me. Yes, oh, I hate her. Thing. We understand. And if the Winks were caught by the guards in season three, Diospro absolutely would have given Flora a pardon. I'm imagining the other Winks running for their lives, and meanwhile, Flora is just having tea with Diospro. <laughs> Diospro appears again in season three as her maid prepares her dress for the upcoming millennial celebration on Oracleon. Diospro isn't keen on going, given she's not looking forward to seeing her ex show off his new girlfriend. Again, her assailant to the whole world, while well, she'd be expected to feign happiness and keep up appearances given her title, give the people what they want to see, and then go home and cry in your room alone later. I feel you, Diaspro. And an event where I'll be on the sidelines. That stupid Sky is bringing his precious little fairy bloom. Now go, get out, beat it, I want to be alone. <gasps> but Valtor, master manipulator, takes advantage of Diaspro's jealousy and unresolved heartache. Poor Diaspro, I know how you feel. Don't be afraid. I'm a friend. I'm here to help. He offers her a way to go back to how things used to be between her and Skye, when everything in her life made sense. All so he can indirectly destroy one of Bloom's pillars of support. I can give you what you want. I can help you fulfill your dream and get rid of Bloom forever. At the party, Diaspro approaches Skye, who's a bit uncomfortable to see her given their history. Diospro insists that they share a toast to each other's happiness, presenting Skye with the drink Valtor gave her. The drink is a potion, however. It puts Skye under Valtor's spell, making him fall madly in love with Diospro and do whatever she says. When the Winx approach, Diospro tells Skye that they're witches sent by Valtor, and Dark Skye, yes, we're calling him that, then declares the Winx public enemy number one, sicking the entire royal guard on them. Odd, Erendor and Samara just went along with this, but they apparently never liked Bloom anyway, so who knows. After the spell on Sky is broken, Diaspro is banished off-screen from Arachleon for her actions. How's Diaspro? She is history. After you guys broke that spell, she was banished from Arachleon. We will never hear from her again. This shot of her on the balcony telling Bloom that Sky will be hers is the last we see of her until season 5. We have no idea what became of her following these events, whether she got the help she needed, or she simply spiraled further, driven mad by her woes. No one likes a mad woman. You made her like that. And I say that because as we all know, the main true canon 
ends with season four, and everything from season five onward is awful corporate fan fiction that retcons itself every six episodes. Speaking of which... I mention all this because I'm... If we're gonna talk about how Diaspora was done dirty, we gotta talk about the slander. So let's do this, bitches. After her absence from season four, Diaspora returns in season five. Given Sky's dumb fall in the Magic Archive gave him amnesia, just go with it for the sake of our sanity, Crystal decides that Sky needs an old friend to remind him of the past. And so she invites Princess Diaspora to speak with him, even though this is literally none of Crystal's business, but you know. Sky, this is Princess Diaspora. <gasps> I know, you've lost your memory. But you know me. I've known you for years. We grew up together. There's no mention of Diaspora's past crimes, her banishment from Heraklion, or her alliance with Valtor. Instead, everyone acts like this is perfectly normal, and Bloom is worried that this means Diaspora will be able to steal Sky away, given their history together. If he loved you, he wouldn't forget. <laughs> he wouldn't forget! <laughs> Luckily for her, they both make fun of Diaspora later and say she just talks about herself. Because if one thing is certain, the show hates Diaspora with its entire being. Because it views her solely as an obstacle between Bloom and Sky, that makes her cheap and easy drama that no one actually likes. You care about her. No, I realize she's really boring. <sighs> <laughs> it's obvious that wanting me dead has really brought you to. Very telling they're not concerned with the actual crimes that Diaspora committed, but rather they just decided they hate her. And then everything else is justification. The only thing she talks about is herself. I know! <laughs> <laughs> they say she did something bad! <laughs> Diaspora would be like, don't blame me, love made me crazy. If it doesn't, you ain't doing it right. Yo, when is Diaspora gonna drop a Reputation album? Anyway, Diaspora then returns in the back half of season five, following Sky's memories being restored because of a stupid necklace, just go with it. For whatever reason, Diaspora's banishment has not only been undone and forgotten, but she's also become a royal advisor to Sky's parents. She speaks with Queen Samara on scheduling her lunches, which you're gonna trust her with your food and beverage after she drugged your son? Wow, Sky's parents are negligent trash. No wonder he turned out the way he did. Erendor, fed up with Sky wanting to be a specialist and also changing between King of Heraklion, Prince of Heraklion, and Crown Prince of Heraklion constantly, names Diaspora royal liaison because titles mean nothing, giving her the power and authority to forcibly drag Sky back to the palace and keep him there. Weirdly, Samara seems to catch on to Diaspora's continued fix station on Sky, which seems to give Diaspora a pause and seemingly reflect for a moment. Still keeping tabs on Sky, are you, Diaspora? This one shot holds more character nuance than the entirety of seasons five through eight. So I'm just gonna hold on to this for dear life. This continues for the rest of season five with Diaspora interrupting Bloom and Sky's dates and conversations, intercepting Bloom's phone calls, and doing all she can to turn Bloom and Sky against each other. It's only when Diaspora says that Sky shouldn't have to concern himself with saving Paradise Bay on Earth from Titanus that Arendor revokes her status in front of all the royals of the magical universe. Diaspora then blames Bloom for everything wrong in her life before she falls into the central pool because Diaspora deserves to drown, apparently. This is your fault, Bloom! You always ruin everything for me! <gasps> Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> Diaspora returns shortly thereafter in season six. For whatever reason, she's at the Heraklion Institute. Is she a student there? Why? How old is she at this point? No one knows, and honestly, the writers don't care. It's just so that she can encounter the tricks when they attack, and so Diaspora can team up with them to kill Bloom because drama. Somehow, Diaspora has been invited to Daphne's coronation on Domino. Funny you should mention Domino because I just got invited to an exclusive ceremony there. They never say who invited her or why, but again, the writers don't give a single fuck. She then goes to Domino, walking around pointlessly and doing nothing in an age-old dress, inciting several bad pixie jokes while the Winks are seemingly unaware of Diaspora's presence. 
It isn't until the Fire Eaters attack that Diaspro tricks Thorin, Sky's cousin who just materialized into existence this season, into bringing Bloom to the Vortex of Flames and tells him to yeet her in head first. Now just place Bloom right into the Vortex of Flames. Are you sure? She's the fairy of the Dragon Flame. Therefore, fire is good for her. God, I can't believe Sky got all the brain cells of the family. And there, it's not a lot. After Diaspora leaves Bloom to die in the literal hell pit. They say I did something bad. It wasn't feel so good. Daphne attacks her, refusing to save her own sister because everyone hates Bloom and you know what, fair. Diaspora mysteriously disappears and we're never shown what happens to her. Daphne simply asks, <laughs> she go? And that's it. Diaspora isn't seen for the rest of season six, nor does anyone mention her or her fate, and she's also not in season seven. And given season eight is a soft reboot that wants to riff off nostalgia bait while ignoring any and all consequences of the previous seasons, I assume Daphne's power was so strong it completely destroyed Diaspora, leaving no trace of her behind. Daphne will not see prison time for this because she's in the club so she's immune from prosecution. She's a royal so she could get out of it anyway. And the show already hates Diaspora so it probably views it as justified. Poor Diaspora, I know how you feel. Speaking of season 8, it's more of the same. Diaspora's previous crimes and murder attempts are ignored. She continually stalks Sky, blowing up his phone to get his attention and interrupt his date with Bloom. And she then uses Sky's tension with his father over, you guessed it, being a specialist, get a new conflict, Jesus Christ, to try and get close to Sky to win him over. She leads Sky on a pointless mission across multiple worlds, both forcing the two of them to spend time together while keeping Sky from contacting Bloom. Of course, this fails, and nothing worth meriting happens. My brain has melted. Season 9 is another reboot of sorts, but I'm willing to bet that the writers will learn nothing from the last few seasons' reception, and Diaspora will yet again be used as a drama tool for Bloom and Sky's relationship or just not exist at all. Not existing actually might be more merciful for her at this point. Diaspro is often seen by the writing and likely by many viewers as a villain, or at least an antagonist, but she's really not. Again, she starts off a victim in the first season and only acts as an antagonist in the third season when Valtor preys upon her desperation. But the show seems to view her as more of an obstacle between Bloom and Sky than anything else. Even in the first three seasons, which are the best written of the franchise and rightfully considered the golden era, unfortunately, the writing in those seasons dismisses Diaspora's story in this regard. While Diaspora is with Flora and Chatta in season two, we learn that she's been raised from birth to marry Sky. That's all a princess is good for, according to what she's been taught. I spent my whole life studying posture, etiquette, court protocol, everything! We understand. And after all that work, I'm supposed to marry a prince, that's the whole point! Hey, there are plenty of princes in the magic dimension! And this is in line with what we've seen of the other princesses, especially Aisha being betrothed to a man she'd never even met once she came of age. Today my parents told me that they picked a guy who they expected me to marry. He's from the richest family in Andros, and all I know is that his name is Nabu, and that my life is about to be ruined forever! Diaspro, meanwhile, has likely been engaged to Skye for a long time, which could explain why she's so infatuated with him. It's essentially a sunk cost fallacy, along with the fact Sky does seem to care about her on some level. Forget about my future. She's an innocent in trouble. If I don't rescue her, she won't have any future at all. Admittedly, because we don't know a lot about Diaspora's past or even Sky's, this is mostly headcanon. I personally believe that Sky is one of the few people, if not the only person, who treated Diaspora like a person rather than an object. He did the bare minimum, leading to her falling in love with him which is also why she's so defensive of her relationship with him. It's genuinely the only thing in her life that feels real, and it also carries the pressure of being her one and only goal bestowed upon by her parents and society. The engagement ending leaves her feeling not only alone and hurt, but also purposeless and ashamed. I doubt her parents were very happy with her after this. And as much as I've come to appreciate the 4Kids dub, a lot of the jokes that they use for her in season two specifically 
don't help with the fandom perception of Diaspora. Diaspora, you're a terrible leader. You're hurting the people you rule. I'm saving that planet from style trauma. It's a lot of, hey, it's not my fault my subjects are so poor I had to imprison them for their fashion crimes. Funny? Yes. But it doesn't exactly make her sympathetic. Granted, she doesn't need to be. She can be both a victim of her privilege and a perpetrator of an oppressive system. I suppose it's more of a personal qualm of mine than anything else. And sometimes, shit ain't that deep. But need I remind y'all that, again, it must needs be remarked, Bloom and Sky were both shitty to Diaspro back in season one. Sky had essentially let Diaspro believe that their engagement was more than a business transaction or loveless custom and then emotionally cheated on her by getting involved with Bloom, only to reveal by the end of season one that he apparently could have ended the engagement himself the whole time. There was no need to drag this out the whole season. Bloom, meanwhile, was in a bad mindset where it makes sense that she would assume it would be another of the Trix's schemes. However, she gave into her impulse as usual and didn't bother to make sure that this was indeed a Trix plot before attacking Diaspro. Diaspro was just being randomly assaulted in trying to defend herself, only to find her assailant stealing the one man she actually gives a shit about. Wouldn't you be grouchy in that situation? It also feels like Skye is the actual bad guy here. Again, he never needed to drag out this engagement when he could have owned up to the fact he doesn't love Diaspro the way that she loves him ended their relationship, and then dated Bloom without being a cheating scumbag. I've recently been getting into the 100, and the dynamics between Clark, Raven, and Finn really remind me of Bloom, Sky, and Diaspro. Except in this case, the show feels nuanced enough to not paint anybody as fully the bad guy. Though for the record, I stand both Clark and Raven, and Finn can choke. No women being pitted against each other for a man. I vote instead for the women aligning themselves to kill the shitty man. Basically, yeah, Diaspro is a victim, and this is why I took the route I did in my season 5 rewrite. For those unaware, long, long ago in the faraway year of 2020, I wrote and narrated a grand fanfiction of Winx season 5, trying to continue where season 4 left off, both story and tone-wise. The Winx were allowed to continue growing up, and the story was allowed to get darker and more mature, while still honoring the roots of what made people love Winx to begin with. Diaspora was rehabilitated in Light Rock Monastery and actually came to terms with what happened to Skye, and was even able to reflect on why she was so attached to him to begin with. And in my upcoming season 6 rewrite, which is set to be released in 2052, Diaspora will continue that journey of recovery. Though possibly backsliding a little bit, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see, I guess. But the point is that Diaspora deserved better. There will be no homicide attempts, at least committed to try and win the heart of the most boring blonde alive. In short, Diaspro could have been a really interesting character if the writers bothered looking at her as a character rather than an obstacle and source of pointless drama. Instead, the writers seem to reset her story every now and then for the sake of cheap conflict, and it seems that either they're aware of what they're doing and don't care, or that these new writers are just unfamiliar with the material. Either way, I think we're all tired of the same old story with Diaspro trying to steal Bloom's man. Just something new, please. Justice for Diaspro, bitches. Anyways, if you enjoyed this and would like to see more content like this from me, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube hates creators. And also please consider, if you're willing and able, pledging your support for myself and the channel over on Patreon, giving a one-time donation via the thanks button down below, and checking out my urban fantasy novel, Disinerbus from the Ashes, in the description below. You can get it wherever books are sold and request it at your local library. I'm the Unicorn of War, and Diaspora's life post-season 5 is a goddamn shit show.